touch it back and hold Baby, one more time I ain't doing too bad, babe I got you on my mind Hey, 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 hey. You're having a darn good time No brand new band. Hi, I'm John DeVore. Welcome to the channel. Today's a record review of sorts. Um, but I also wanted to talk about a little bit about what the listening process is, what is a meaningful musical experience, and how that relates to high-end audio. Uh, almost as a cautionary tale based on an experience that I had with a particular record. The record is Junior Wells' Hoodoo Man Blues. This was Junior Wells' debut album for Delmark Records, 1965, with an awesome guest appearance by Buddy Guy. It is an amazing record. First time I ever heard this record was in the late 80s. It was in the East Village, and it was in the apartment of one of those quintessential East Villagers of legend, which unfortunately are becoming a little bit of a rarity. Uh, but this was a guy who had lived in his rent-controlled apartment for a million years. The apartment was completely unrenovated and yet beautiful in a way. It was not large. It was a decent-sized railroad cold water flat. It was furnished with a small kitchen table with two chairs and a rug in the living room and a futon and a small, inexpensive boombox. Something from the probably early to mid-80s. One of those small ones with the little four-inch speakers in it uh, that was radio and cassette. So I heard Hoodoo Man Blues for the first time on that system in that house. And it blew me away. He played Hoodoo Man Blues and he also played some James Brown. But his presentation of it was such that it burned in my mind, it, and it is one of those handful of peak musical experiences that I can look back on and I know that I will remember always. Just completely focusing in and grooving on the magnificence of Junior Wells's and Buddy Guy's performance on this. It's an amazing blues record, one of the great blues records of all time. It was, it was Delmark Records' number one selling record, I think still is, probably. Uh, not difficult to find. Interestingly enough, Junior Wells tried to record the title track, Hoodoo Man Blues, before he recorded it to a 78 and almost didn't put it on this record because he later said the experience of bringing that 78 around to the record stations was humiliating. None of the record stations wanted to have anything to do with it, so much so that some of them grabbed the 78 off of the turntable, threw it on the ground, and stomped on it and smashed it into a million little shattered pieces. Kind of amazing, because it's an amazing song. And we should all be happy that he re-recorded it on this. Uh, it has been reissued many times, not only by Acoustic Sounds in a, in a beautiful heavyweight vinyl uh, audiophile edition, but also by Delmark on 15 IPS two-track tape uh, directly from the master or from a control. And that brings me around to the second part of what I wanted to talk about today. So yes, this is an amazing album, highly recommended. Not an audiophile record by any stretch. Uh, there's tons of distortion on the recording itself. I don't know if he sang through a distortion box or if he's just totally overwhelming the microphone chain. Whatever it is, it has a very particular sound. It is stereo and it is great to listen to 
on a really high-end audio rig. But my first experience with this record back at Brody's East Village apartment was so powerful that I sought to somehow reproduce it in my own room. And so I found a, a scratchy original record of it and played it. I never quite got back to that, to that sort of revelation moment that I had at Brody's apartment. Then got the acoustic sounds audiophile version of it and knew, absolutely knew that, okay, this will be it. This is gonna, I'm gonna be able to re-experience this, this Nirvana moment. No, didn't. Uh, became certainly more aware of the recording's limitations. Then I saw on Delmark Records website that they were issuing this tape. And as everyone knows, that tape is the ultimate format. It is certainly the most expensive format per second of recorded music that you can get, for consumers anyway. Uh, and so I jumped on the chance and bought it. Played it back, and it was the same experience that I had had with my Acoustic Sounds reissue. And that got me thinking about what it was from that original experience that I was trying to recreate. And that's sort of what I wanted to talk about a little bit today. There are many ways to have a peak musical experience. A great many of my peak musical experiences have been at live performances. Uh, classical, rock, jazz, just transcendent moments that I know I will be able to think back and replay in my mind forever. Where the music utterly transported me out of the mundane experience of being in my meat sack of a body into some higher plane of experience. Uh, I've also had these these transcendent experiences in front of my hi-fi. I've had them in front of other people's hi-fis. I can't remember any experiences where I've had it in the car, but that's certainly possible because the, because the fidelity at Brody's apartment from that worn out cassette on that crappy boombox was utterly low. So I know that these peak musical experiences can literally have nothing to do whatsoever with the fidelity of the playback system. What was it? It was a coming together of many things. It was my hanging out with this guy Brody who was an amazing character and a guy who I, as I sat there at his kitchen table, I was absorbing knowledge and experience like a sponge. It can be right place, right time, which that also probably was. It can also be subverted expectations. It can be many things. And, and all of this made me realize that this couple of decade attempt to reproduce a peak musical experience by trying to reproduce that particular music with utmost fidelity is not necessarily gonna get me there because there are so many other things attached to the way that humans experience music. Um, so a bit of a cautionary tale, but the lesson here though I wanna make sure is not one of don't chase your audiophile dreams. Rather, be careful of what you expect from your experiences. I now play Hoodoo Man Blues on tape and sit back with my eyes closed and enjoy it as much as anything I enjoy playing back on my system. And I absolutely love it. And what made that possible was separating this experience with that experience that I had in the late 80s at Brody's house. So that's it. Maybe it sounded a little bit like a lecture. I didn't mean it to be. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you at the next video. Bye. Lord, I wonder what's got the matter. A time over time. It seemed like the hours. A little thing and change, but I hold my hand. Trying to make you understand. Lord, you know what? Everybody, they tell me somebody that who do the who do man. Now, you know, I, I buzzed your bell this morning, baby. Had your elevator running slow. I buzzed your bell, little girl, tape up on the a third floor, but I hold my hand. Lord, trying to make you understand. Lord, you know what they tell the baby. 
There's somebody in who do the who do man. <laughs> Look at him, baby. Everybody, they tell me, somebody on who do the who do man. <laughs> 